And Singapore has just launched Asia's first think tank of global space experts to use space tech to potentially unlock more than $600 billion for the region's economy. They will work with things like satellite data to help industries such as agriculture and logistics. Now, for more on this, we have former NASA scientist Dr. Kartik Sheth, chairman of the Singapore Space and Technology Think Tank Council, and Nicolette Yeo, the general manager Welcome to the program, both of you. Um, so first, let's talk about um, how this think tank will be supported, right? It is a private initiative. Ms. Yeo, how will it fund its operations and will it receive any government fundings or any some sort of partnership between public and private companies? Sure. Thank you for having us uh, on the show. Today, we launched um, the SST Think Tank. Uh, Asia's first space innovation think tank dedicated to commercializing space in Asia. This is a non-profit, non-governmental organization and is a neutral platform that brings together global think tank council members from across many different regions. Mm. We have Dr. Katik from North America. We have uh, council members from Europe, Middle East, um, Australia, Japan and India. And all of these council members bring a different elevated um, level of global expertise mm -hmm. never seen before in Asia. Okay, and choosing a home base, I suppose, is a strategic decision too, apart from the manpower. So why Singapore? What is the advantage of having this Asian think tank here, headquartered here? So Singapore already has a very vibrant uh, space ecosystem right now. We have uh, 2,000 professionals across 70 different space companies in Singapore. Um, and Singapore actually offers a neutral ground. We have excellent infrastructure. We have strong financing, uh, financial capital. And we also have strong talent pipeline. And Singapore allows us to connect Asia to the global space economy. Mm. And there are a lot of opportunities. Um, and Singapore will then be a strong launch pad for widespread space tech adoption in Asia. Great. Uh, you know, Dr. Chef, you've had such an illustrious career. I was just reading your credentials. Uh, you've been at NASA. You've been at the White House, just to name a few. How does your experience contribute to the goals of this mission, the mission of this think tank? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you again for having us. And it's such an incredible day. Uh, and I'm so happy to be part of this think tank and to lead the, the council for this first ever mm. think tank. Um, my experience in NASA was really across many different programs, trying to understand how space can really make the life of humanity better. The mission of NASA is that we are exploring space and pushing the boundaries, not for the benefit of NASA or benefit of the United States, but for benefit of all. And for me, being able to bring that expertise of having organized, managed, launched missions, uh, looked at how it can truly improve lives, uh, but doing it now, in this new era, what we call space version 2.0, is such an opportunity for us mm. to have a democratization of all of space, where space is now accessible, not just to governments and not the sole um, uh, purview of uh, big companies, but something that somebody in agriculture, somebody in forestry, somebody in disaster relief, is able to now access space and space data. You probably are already aware that the way you navigate around Singapore is using your GPS, or you take your photograph with your uh, iPhone. Sure. All of those are mm. everyday examples of how space has contributed to us. And now with opening up of space to everybody, this is an incredible chance for us to bring my knowledge, but also the knowledge of the council to uh, sort of revolutionize the space sector in Asia. I, I'm curious, I got to ask you this. Yeah, yeah. Have you been to space yourself? Uh, no. no. Okay. <laughs> I All wanted right. to. <laughs> you, that would happen probably one day. Yeah? So I see that you brought along this um, mock-up with you. I mean, how are such satellites relevant in space explorations? Uh, absolutely, this is a mock-up. So uh, uh, it simply kind of shows you the main components of what a satellite might look like. The two things that you see sticking out are solar panels, and in the middle, you often have a telescope of some size. Sure. Tele satellites like this um, can vary in size from about that big mm. to the size of a school bus. And once we get them up there, what they do is they really allow us to look down at the Earth and really have an eye from space to be able to really monitor 
things, everything from water to agriculture to shipping uh, logistics to, to even uh, communications across the globe. Mm -hmm. So that's what this, this mock-up is just meant to signify the kinds of things we put up in space. Okay, and zooming out a bit here, uh, Ms. Yeo, beyond research, uh, what economic impact could the think tank have on Singapore? What industries stand to benefit the most from these initiatives? Sure, so here at SST Think Tank, um, we see space as a horizontal technology just like the internet, right? Dr. Karthik already mentioned, you know, space is a rich source of data. Mm. It offers us a bird's eye view of what's happening here on Earth. And it has applications across multiple different industries, whether it's agriculture, maritime, logistics, disaster relief, um, financial services, insurance. And so the mission of the think tank is really to educate and advocate for the use and the harnessing of the potential of space technology to support innovation and business transformation mm -hmm. for the business community across multiple industries. Dr. Chef, you're also a founder of Empowered Earth Alliance, which promotes local resilience and innovation. How can Singapore and the region be more self-reliant with space tech? Uh, it's a great question. In fact, when Nikki shared with me the idea of this think tank, mm. she had a sentence in there that said, space as a catalyst for good. Mm. And the idea here is that rather than relying on um, somebody else giving us the solutions, we can use even existing space data right now. There's a study that was recently done, as you mentioned in your opening. We can add $600 billion of additional value to the GDP simply by using existing data to solve problems re related to improving our agricultural yield, by using the data to plan how our cities grow, by using the data to um, really respond to disasters. So rather than waiting for somebody else to help us, we mm -hmm. can develop those tools here in Asia and use existing space data without launching any new missions. This, these data already exist and are available to take care of um, many of the challenges that we face on a day-to-day -day basis. And looking ahead, what do you think is the long-term potential of the space technologies you are developing? Um, I think that you, know, you, you should think about space like the internet. It's going to be part and parcel of everything you do. Um, there are, there, I can just look back and tell you that the athletic shoes you wear to the mattress foam uh, that you sleep on. Mm -hmm. um, all of those things came from space technology over the last 60 years. Imagine now that we can get to space more easily, what we can do. It promises things like um, new metamaterials, new biopharmaceutical drugs. It allows us to think about new fiber optic cables that are designed and manufactured in space that can allow communication to happen at a much faster rate. It allows us to pre-position uh, rescue and um, safety vehicles, for example, before a disaster happens so that we, we are not responsive. So uh, the, the possibilities are limitless. And imagine adding to that, you were just talking about AI in your previous segment, yeah. adding artificial intelligence to that will allow us to process all this data even faster to be able to get to that good. Definitely, it's interesting times for space technologies and uh, new frontiers. Thank you so much for coming in to speak with us tonight, uh, Dr. Chef and Ms. Yeo. That was Dr. Kartik Chef and Ms. Nicolette Yeo from the newly launched SST Think Tank.